Top Tip Tuesday time again, Bob here from Insidium, hello, and on today's video we're going to be taking a ray line spline animation with some particles in there as well, and we're going to be rendering these with redshift, so loads of cool tricks in here, how to do additive materials with both uh, splines and with particles, and how we can get some nice coloration of splines with gradients running along the length. So lots of cool stuff to fit in here, let's begin. Here's our cached scene then from the Rayline Particles top tip and we're going to use this to do our rendering. So we've got three basic elements that we're going to be rendering here. Let's have a look at those separately. So first of all we have got our emitter, let's just switch everything off, our emitter Rayline Particles. Now these were simulated just by using the turbulence and the constraints which has given us these nice kind of wormy tendrils in the centre of our sphere. We are then using Mesh Tools Rayline to cast rays from those particles outwards. Where those rays intersect with the inside of our sphere ray line, it creates a contact point and it, it stops the ray. The contact point, we have got these particles that get generated. Let's make those active. You can see those blue particles on the end. So those are the contact points where the ray makes contact with the sphere. And then we were tracing trails using these contact point particles with our XP trail. So we get those three elements, the middle particles, the rays they're casting, and then these trails that are drawn from those contact points. Very cool. So that is what we're going to be rendering. Dig into the scene file to see how all that was done and watch the uh, other top tip. Let's go into our Redshift render view to start rendering. Okay, and if we hit render, you can see that, oh, actually, we've got one more thing. Our sphere ray line that we used in the simulation, we've made invisible, but we made a copy and just made it slightly bigger, so it perfectly encapsulates all of those elements within it, and that's what we're going to render. We can see that in our render view. The reason we can see it is that the sphere has got this glass material on, which we'll have a look at in a bit, and we've also got this redshift external light, which has got uh, this HDR just from the content browser, which is giving us these nice reflections. Okay, so let's start rendering this. Um, one thing we need to do, if we go to our glass material that's on our sphere, um, again, have a look in the scene file to see how it's set up, but it's really simple. It's just a standard node set to a glass settings, and we have got some um, a Maxon noise driving the roughness and driving the displacement. Uh, we're not actually seeing the displacement yet though because to get that to work we need to go to the redshift object tag which is on our sphere render, go to the geometry tab and override, put tessellation on and put displacement on and we'll put this on say 5 and 5 and there you can see that we're getting that nice displacement in our sphere. Okay. So let's have a look at how we're going to render these three different elements. First of all, they're all going to need Redshift object tags on here. So let's click on all of those and go to Tags, and we'll go to Render Tags, Redshift Object. We'll start with our ray line. So in the ray line uh, Redshift Object tag, it's recognized that this is a spline type of object, so it gives us a curve options, and we're going to go mode, let's instance some cylinders on those, and you can see them, uh, they're in the default green object color, that's a bit big, we're going to put them on say 0.2, and then we're going to create a new material, so let's double click, put this on our ray line, uh, we can't really see them because uh, there's not enough light getting through our sphere. So what we're going to do, let's go to our material options here, and we're going to make this emit light. So in the standard node, let's come down to the bottom where we've got our emission settings. We'll put this on, say, 2. And now, yes, those ray line rays are casting white light. Now we're going to colour them. So let's double click, and we're going to put in ramp, and we're going to get a ramp. All right, and this ramp, we're going to put this into the geometry opacity. And by putting it into the geometry opacity, it means we're going to get this nice additive material where we'll get glowy hot spots. So with this ramp, let's just add some color. We're going to load a preset and we'll let's bring in this black violet one, but actually we're not going to use it all. Let's um, take out this knot, this knot, 
and then right click distribute knots we'll use those so you can see that we're getting some nice coloration here but it's not quite right and um, it's a little bit over bright at the moment so let's go to each of these colors and in the color options for each we're going to put the value down to 50 and that means that it'll give us room to have lots of nice overlapping bits which will give us the whiter kind of hot spots so we'll bring all of those down to a value of 50 and that's starting to look cool but we're not getting the full distribution of colors from our gradient across the length of our ray line but there's a node that we can use to get that let's double click and we're going to type in vertex because we want a vertex attribute node and what we want to do is put the scale hour of this into the alt input of our gradient this isn't right yet we need to get the right attribute name and we find it in the presets and if we go to curves curve position this creates black to white uh, gradient down the length of each spline so if we then fade that into our ramp it means that we get the perfect distribution the start color is at the start and it goes all the way along to the tip of our trail across this uh, gradient so that is perfect brilliant let's get this same material and put it onto our trail and all we need to do is go to our redshift object tag curve we need to instance the cylinders again and I think we could have this uh, with a thickness of uh, one a thicker line but let's kind of make it come down to a point so we can do that just by putting down uh, that knot and it kind of just sharpens that off okay so that's looking pretty cool already and it looks really nice coming through that displaced glass doesn't it that's really what sells the look so what we could do here let's just go back to our materials we could actually just put this exact same material on our ray line particles we need to go to the tag to the particles tab to say what to instance let's do sphere instances and we just get the first knot of our of our gradient color with this um, there isn't kind of vertex information it's just one single particle so we just get the first color but that looks good for us so there is our basic look and through that glass material it's looking very nice just finally let's make this look a little bit nicer by having a look at some of the redshift effects so if we go to our render view and we come to this menu and hit the cog wheel let's first do a let's do a bloom first we'll activate the bloom let's bring back, uh, down the settings and we need to bring this threshold way down maybe to 0.3 and we'll reduce the softness to zero and let's put the intensity maybe up just a little bit okay and then if we just um, minimize that you can see we're starting to get these really nice kind of glowy hot spots now so that's looking very nice indeed and one thing i mean i would urge to do this in post really but a bit more contrast would be nice here so what we could do is go back to our cog wheel and we could go to our color controls look let's activate those and let's just add i don't know a bit of contrast point one and that's just yeah that's looking good so there we have got our really cool ray line and particle um, simulation and through this glass material with the various different displacement and uh, dispersion settings it just looks fantastic it's definitely a render that looks greater than the sum of its parts